Hi everyone, and welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Abby, I'm joined by Richard from Slack. Richard, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So I know that a lot of us have probably used Slack before, I know that I have, uh, but for those of us that don't know, can you tell us a little bit about what Slack is? Sure, Slack is a messaging, archiving, and search tool for modern teams getting work done collaboratively. Awesome, so I'm looking at this diagram, I see a couple of things that I'm really interested about, so HA proxy and something called flannel. Uh, before we jump into it, can you tell me a little bit about what you guys have built and, and why? Throughout time, the point of Slack is to be a real-time method of communication, and so we have served this by both having a traditional web API as well as a WebSocket service that keeps people up to date with the latest things happening in their team. And historically, to connect to this service, you have gone first to our web API through CloudFront and ELB to get information about all the users and channels on your team, and then you've connected to the WebSocket in order to stay up to date with everything that happened since you connected. So I know that the problem of WebSockets through ELB has historically been a tricky one. Can you tell me a little bit about how you guys have solved that problem? Sure. So we experimented a lot with running our WebSocket stack through ELB and eventually settled on running our own load balancer tier using HAProxy. And the advantages that that's given us as we've scaled out has been the ability to control user affinity to the particular backends that it are being served and to control the deployment and failover process for these long-lived connections. So you mentioned kind of a magic word for me, which is scaling. So you guys have grown really fast, and the teams you're supporting have grown really fast. Can you give me a little bit of insight about how you guys have handled kind of scaling and deployments and rollbacks and, and good stuff like that? Certainly. So in the olden days, when you connect to Slack, you'd have to download something possibly on the order of dozens of megabytes of data about all the users and channels and things that exist on your team so that your client could make sense of all the web WebSocket messages that came down. Since that time, in order to support much larger teams using Slack, we've added this service that we call Flannel to like accelerate a little bit, <laughs> to accelerate all of the messages that we need to send to those users. And the, the function of Flannel is, is what I have started to call a WebSocket CDN. It's an edge cache of users and other information that you need to understand the WebSocket messages being sent to your client. So basically, reduce the amount of information that you're sending all the time and try to cache things so that you can get stuff to the users as quickly as possible. Precisely. See, we have to deal with both long-lived connections as well as, in the case of mobile clients, very short connections that are sometimes on the average of 30 seconds. And so we don't want to be downloading dozens of megabytes only to stay connected and use that for 30 seconds. Right. So solving kind of two really hard, well, lots of really hard problems all at the same time. Absolutely. So once I hit the flannel service, it looks like I hit IPsec next. What happens next? Well, when you connect to Slack first to your WebSocket, you connect to HAProxy, which connects to flannel. And as I mentioned, that is trying to route users on the same team to the same flannel instance, and that's for cache efficiency. That gives us a better ca cache hit ratio as well as a better memory utilization. Users on the same team are likely to use the same objects in cache, so we get a more efficient gotcha. storage so experience. Gotcha, so you can load more stuff from cache every time, because if we're on the same team, we probably share a lot of the same info. Exactly. And in the case that Flannel misses in cache, it actually goes all the way back to our web application to populate the cache. And since that's an expensive operation, we try to minimize that as best we can. Gotcha, so push off cache hits as long as possible. Mm -hmm. So once I hit Flannel, what happens next? When you're sending a WebSocket message, that ultimately needs to be sent through this IPsec tunnel back to our home region in EC2 in US East 1. And once it gets to the other side of that tunnel, it reaches what we call the gateway service, which forwards it on to the channel service. And the purpose of these two services in conjunction is to allow us to scale the number of users in a channel beyond the number of sockets that can exist on a single EC2 instance. So by fanning out, messages from one gateway to many channel servers and vice versa, we can have millions of users in a channel. So you've, you've built your infrastructure to kind of scale up as quickly as the teams that are using Slack are scaling up. We're trying to stay one step ahead of them. <laughs> it's a good place to be. So my last question, Richard, I see that we've kind of drawn this whole diagram around Route 53. Can you give me a little bit of insight on how Route 53 ties all these pieces together? Certainly. So it probably goes without saying that when users want to get to Slack.com, they ask Route 53. Right. But what isn't so obvious is that we also use Route 53 and its health checking feature to make sure that each of these HA proxy load balancer nodes are up and healthy and able to serve users' traffic. And when they're not, we deal with the failover problem of potentially hundreds of thousands of WebSocket connections dying and needing to be reestablished. 
And we pay a lot of attention to how these connections are managed and how we even the load across both the pool of HA proxy servers as well as the pool of flannel servers. And so our deployment process has had to take into account the load balancing algorithm as well as the replacement algorithm for all these servers to ensure that the load is relatively even. Well, it sounds like you guys are, are doing cool stuff, right? So making the, the messaging as close to possible as, as real time. Um, Richard, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and thanks for watching. This is my architecture.